Okay, welcome back to the Between Breast podcast. I'm Jacko, your host, um, and we have a fantastic guest uh, today, Nicole Neuroscience. You'll know us on um, Instagram. Uh, author of Rewire, she is obviously a neuroscientist, and we've been speaking for you know a good maybe year or two. Um, on the World Wide Web, on the on the Instagram, um, and finally got round to getting together to record this podcast, which I was very, very, very excited for. Uh, Nicole is a yeah, just a wonderful human being, one amazing uh, scientist, and amazing the way she presents her information. But very not, but it's not. But one of the things I love is that it's very palatable, very tangible very um simple to sort of understand it's not confusing neuroscience at all um and really practical things that we can use to enhance our our health our minds our well-being our experience of life so why wouldn't you want to why wouldn't want you uh, to listen to that why wouldn't you want to have her on the podcast so super excited to have uh, her on and for you to be able to um listen to what she's got to say. Um, I took an awful lot out of this um, episode uh, myself. Um, we talked a lot about um, really amazing bits around like attention and where we are putting our attention. And she said this, I wrote this quote down of like, pay attention to where you are placing your attention. There's a, a finite amount of attention that we're able to, we all have and where you're spending it is going to be dictating the experience that that you have and that's just one of many um fantastic topics that we talk about um, a lot about social media uh, a lot about managing that a lot about her she's very honest and vulnerable and talks about her own um challenges with that as well as her um yeah her her huge rise that's obviously led to the work that she's doing and her uh, and her book deal and stuff so for those of you that are um coaches self-employed yourself and you're looking to you know you, you're trying to use social media to help promote and get the word out there about what it is that, that you do she has some great advice for for managing that and uh and for growing that so uh, i'm very much forward very much forward very much i'm very much looking forward to it's terrible english i'm not an english teacher i'm a breath coach um science teacher not english um and uh yeah if you want to come and learn about breathing rather than um english which i don't teach uh you will um or some of you will, be, will know that i'm six thousand words into writing a book um obviously don't worry i'll get someone to spell check it for me um but uh that's something for gosh knows who knows when that's going to be available i'm committed to writing this year um but yeah workshops events if you want to become a certified Oxford instructor, few opportunities this year, um, 9th to 11th of February with me as your master instructor. That means you get me then as your mentor ongoing for your support, uh, as part of the, as part of the, um, the course, um, that is so 11th to 9th of, uh, 9th to 11th of February in Nottingham. Uh, that's a three day in person certification, but then you get all the online support, access to the Oxford Vantage portal, and then that ongoing mentoring um, support group that I provide for all the coaches. There's over 100 of them now that um, I have trained. The next in person one after that is in Scotland, done over a retreat. Um, so it's three days in person, but at a retreat center in Scotland, just north of. Glasgow, all of your accommodation, all of your food, all of your training, um, all of the education, you become, you know, you get the whole certification and that whole retreat experience and access to all of the facilities as part of that. That is the 17th and 19th of May, I believe. Um, and there are still places available for that. Obviously, it's a much smaller group with it being in that retreat setting. Um, so there are two in person and then online in October over eight weeks, one session a week over eight weeks, uh, starting in April. That's the other option I am doing that you may be interested in. So you can join that from anywhere um, in the world. All the sessions are recorded. So even if you can't make all of them live, there's only one per week to join live. But even if you can't join live, you can just obviously watch uh, the replay. This is all the same content, but just done through uh, Zoom online. So it's easier for some people to access 
um, that way. And then uh, finally, at the end of the year, Australia um, and New Zealand are going to be running a certification in Sydney and potentially one in New Zealand as well, uh, November, December time. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, it's happening. Flights are booked. We're just finalizing the details, but that's happening for the end of the year. If you are on, if you're Dan and a mate, if you're on the other side um, of the world. Um, so yeah, there's uh, certifications happening. Then there's other, um, other just workshops and retreats happening in Manchester in April. Um, there's cold water breathwork with Rooted Life in the 2nd of March. Um, head over to rootedlife.co.uk to check that one out. If you haven't come to that's in Cheshire, the beautiful farm club. I think we've run six or seven there now over the last few years with the Rooted Life team. Um, always a fabulous day. That's a full day um, event. So lots of bits and pieces going on. Head over to uh, rootedlife.co.uk for that one. Everything else from me um, around breath training is at probreathwork.com. And finally, thanking today's podcast sponsor as ever, um, very adapt, adapt or very relevant. Um, Ketone IQ is from HVMN and the ketones, I've been talking them, you know, they've sponsored the podcast ever since it started. I've been using it for long before they started sponsoring the podcast. Um, but interestingly, um, as the as a fuel source, it bypasses the blood brain barrier and is very good for going directly for um, the brain, for focus, for concentrate, so energy for the brain, and uh, for focus, for concentration, for energy. So um, often if I'm doing the podcast in the afternoon, I one thing I do do is I have a little sip of the uh, the ketones um, because it's not going to give you any there's no caffeine or anything like that in it. So it's it, but it gives us that sense of focus and attention that you might get sometimes from that. Um, from that caffeine hit when you have coffee in the morning. Um, but obviously none of the side effects that's going to affect sleep. So um, I use that sometimes in the afternoon, um, but also in and around endurance training because it's fantastic um, for that. Just put a little shot of that in with the drink and your hydration salts, whatever else you've got going on um, that I've been doing for fueling my ultra endurance uh, events. Um, I've got actually things have got coming up, uh, things that I'm doing. Welcome to come and join the um, uh, in July. I think it's the 14th of July. It's Snowden 24 event. That's what's happening this year again. So I'm going back. Did six reps last time during the event and then three more the weekend after um, to make up my nine. But I'm going to try and beat the six. Um, eight, well, eight was the winner last time, um, which is, that would be a bit of a push. I've got to try and do seven, haven't I? Um, I would love to, a number of you came last time and did a rep with me. That was beautiful. It gives so much energy when you need it. But um, yeah, it's uh, if you'd love to join, message me. Come join for a. Um, I got two people already kind of do actually do the whole event, um, but because they have runners as well. But if you want to come and just walk up Snowdon and uh, in on the fourteenth of July, I'm going to be going up at least six or seven times. So uh, come and join me for one. I uh, would love to see you there. And um, I'm in the Aruri Marathon, so the Snowdonia Marathon. Um, that's in uh, in October. There are two events I'm taking part in. I'd love to hear what type of, if you're into your sort of running and your enjoyment events, I'd love to hear what things you guys and girls um, are up to and love to hear about and maybe help you if you need it in terms of keeping it nasal for the, all of the benefits for that sort of aerobic um, performance. So if you um, do want to use Keaton IQ, thanking the, um, the podcast sponsors, HVMN, you get 20% discount with code Jacko. Or if you go to the link, um, hvmn.com forward slash Jacko, the link is in the show notes. They automatically give you the 20% off. So that's hvmn.com forward slash Jacko. Get you 20% off your Ketone IQ products. So with that being said, um, nothing else to do other than sit back, relax, enjoy Nicole Neuroscience on the Between Breaths podcast. We enter this world taking our first breath and sadly we leave this place taking our last. And what I want to do with this podcast is to explore what happens between those breaths. I'm David Jackson, Jacko, and this is the Between Breaths podcast. Okay, Nicole, welcome to the Between Breaths podcast. I feel like this is um, a long time coming, um, but welcome <laughs> to the podcast. Say hello to the listeners. Hello, thank you very much. I know we've been following each other for quite some time and I think we've kind of chit-chatted here and there. We were going to do something together at one stage as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's long, long overdue for us to have this conversation. Yes, I think we were even talking about doing a bit of 
coaching and stuff and it's yeah. like let's have a podcast let's have a let's 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 let everyone in on the conversation rather than having the conversation <laughs> in silence not silence well, you can't, I, yeah. I was i was running at the time and i remember you were well i know you run quite a lot and i remember having you the thought of my mind while running because i was kind of like dying <laughs> Oh my God! I need to sort yeah. this out. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I don't realise how many people sort of have a little Jacko voice in their head, thinking, yeah. saying that, like, keep it nasal, mate. And maybe sometimes, if you only listen to a few snippets of maybe what I put on social media and don't get the full picture, some people, you know, and I did it myself. It was like, um, we'll quickly get onto neuroscience, but I did it myself in terms of like running, trying to nasal breathe. And after 50 meters, like snot pouring down into my face. And I'll be like, this yeah. isn't better. This is way worse. Like what's going on? Anyway. Um... We should have that coaching session because uh, my partner tries to get me to wear mouth tape of, at night, but I rip it off every time I wake up and it's just, it's just not there. I know I need to do it. I'm a, I'm a heavy mouth breather when I sleep. It's not great. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, we can maybe, maybe we can touch on that later, but um, I wanted to, <laughs> um, let's, let's, let's start with um i'm gonna start with some compliments actually and then uh for you to introduce us just yeah i mean look you've got nearly half a million followers on instagram i'm sure everybody is listening will know who you are but there might be one person that hasn't so a, a, a short little intro but just um so my my compliments like the the stuff you put out amazing but a breathing compliment in that so you're smiling at me now as you're we're laughing about stuff like and you've got a beautiful wide smile great teeth <laughs> unlike me and right. that tells me that what's like your your particular that top jawline is telling me about your your palate and your palate is telling me about your airway and uh -huh. it's telling me that you shouldn't have structurally you don't yeah. have the problems that someone like I've got that's like a really narrow face horrible uh -huh. messed up teeth um mm. because my if my if my um yeah if my palate and my jaw and everything my face is narrow well yeah. that hole behind the back of my nose well that's going to be much smaller. Um, uh -huh. So yeah. you've got genetically on the on the good oh, side. Yeah. So there you go. There's weird yeah. compliments I give people about their teeth and their smiles and stuff. It's <laughs> a bit. The if we go then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It will be. It would be structurally. You've, you've, you're fine for that. Um, oh, I think one thing I say. So it's just that. Um, Often people go straight for the mouth, like see the mouth tapers, like that's going to keep my mouth closed. That's solving my problems of mouth breathing at night. Well, mm. it's literally like a plaster over, quite quite literally, a plaster over the problem. Yeah. We need to address and practice some breathing during the day to change yeah. our habits at night and using tape, something I use, something I use with my clients, but it's part of the solution, not the solution in itself. Yeah, um, yeah. that's what but I think about you when I'm hiking as well. I'd be like, breathe through your nose. So I don't, I practice trying to, I play tennis as well. Yeah. Um, obviously towards the end, I'm like, eh, you know, but you know, <laughs> in the beginning I'm trying really hard to breathe through my nose, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting topic for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, without me turning this into just, I want to talk about breathing with you, like <laughs> let's, um, you're a neuroscientist, like let's, Give give people just a you know a bit of a whistle stop tour of um, how you got to where you are today. But also, we were talking before we went um, uh, live of just what's been happening for you in the in the in the last few minutes, hours, days that you've then started to utilize some of your own things, techniques, and stuff to actually help manage and change shifts. It's going to be just I really love what you said. It's going to be super. The first part is going to be super practical for for the listeners to take part in as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I studied neuroscience, obviously, <laughs> as my undergraduate. I did my research in synaptic plasticity, which, you know, I think is going to be quite a big topic of conversation in today's uh, chat. I know that you actually did a podcast with somebody on this. So I'd love to hear your, your, your thoughts as well. I then realized that kind of, you know, people don't know much about neuroscience. I wanted to make it practical for individuals. Yeah. So I did my master's in organizational psychology so that I could essentially go into organizations and teach people, uh, you know, about neuroscience and how to optimize, for lack of a better term, their lives. Um, you know, I start sort of making sleep, breathing, meditating, exercising, nutrition, all of those things sound sexy because I'm attaching neuroscience to it. So, you know, I'm not saying anything crazy, but all of a sudden when I, when I attach the, the science to it, you can kind of like see the penny drop and people going, ah, yeah. okay, yeah. it makes so much sense. 
it's not just HR telling me that I need to meditate and I need to sleep more, you know, so that's like, yeah, yeah. Sort of putting it together for people and, and people do really change, which is in, in, incredible. So, uh, you know, onto your second question, well, actually just backtrack real quick. I, at the moment, I research decision making. So how we can improve, like basically what is taking attention from us, like attentional resources, where mm. we allocate attention. And at the moment, I'm just looking at social media um, usage on sort of attention and decision making skills, because people will use social media as a perceived break. You know, they'll kind of be like, oh, I'm tired of writing now, just go on social media and scroll and then go back to work. And then they go back to work and they still can't get it out, you know? Yeah because social media is actually sort of pulling on those energy resources. And I'm always sort of teaching people to be mindful of where you're paying your attention to, because like a bank, your brain has a limited amount of capacity. If you're lending money to the, I don't know, comment section part of Instagram, then you have less money for X, Y, Z. Neither is better or worse. It's just to pay attention as to where you're spending your currency, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, It's fascinating. Well, just on the, sorry. And we said this, we were like, um, the conversation's going to go yeah. where it goes. I'm reading a book at the moment called Flow by a guy with a really, really crazy name, so I won't be able to pronounce it. Um, but he's talking about attention uh-huh. and something along the lines of like, uh, this might not be the right number, but maybe like any one time there's only a set number. I feel like it was like 47, but a, a set number of things that you can actually be conscious of or, or have attention of. And I think that one of the things that when you're describing stuff there that we won't realize is we go, oh, okay, yeah, no, I did put a bit of attention into to social media, but we're ignoring all the other, you know, you, there's there might be 25 different sounds yeah. in yeah. the background that uh-huh. birds and trees and cars and, and all those things you're also being a, a aware of. And, mm. yeah, I, I found it... Um, just that idea of being like, let's be careful where we put our attention because we're not. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, our, our eyes, for example, are bringing in billions of bits of information. I mean, there's a whole background behind me that you might not have noticed until I mentioned it. And I've seen all of your certificates. Don't worry. <laughs> my mother-in-law's actually <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, I'm looking at you, but there's, if I wanted to, I could widen my periphery. I could see the lamp. I could see there's a little sort of Christmas bag here and there's, you know, a tree outside, but I'm not looking at it, but the eyes are still bringing it in. Yeah. And my brain is shutting down those things to say that you're important in this conversation right now. My attention is being directed to you, but that information is still coming in. So mm. you know, not even just where are you paying your attention, but what does your environment look like? Because if, when people live in messy environments and they want to sort of sit down to try and focus, it's really hard. That's why going into a library in one of those like cubicles is easier to get into mm. the flow because you're blocking out everything else, not sort of mentally, but actually physically as well, because your eyes don't have to process that information. Yeah. Um, and I love this topic of conversation because it kind of flows into what I know we're going to talk about, which is hypnosis. But hypnosis helps you lower the activity in the salience network. So your salience network is responsible for detecting what's important and what isn't. So if there's yeah, in loud- layman's just in, in layman's terms, what is what is that? Exactly. So if there was a loud noise outside, the salience network says, oh, that's important. And you go, oh, what was that? You know, you don't even think about it. You don't think, oh, noise outside, let me pay attention. It just happens, right? Yeah, yeah. And we have so many things in our environment that when we start paying attention to different things, so say, for example, my phone is here and it's in my periphery, there's going to be subliminal cues all the time to say, pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. I've got a wall in here. (laughs) yeah. Okay, and then your attention gets diverted to that. So your brain gets really good at diverting to that. Mm. Okay, so it attaches salience to your phone. So yeah. putting away in a different room and, and practicing coming back to where you need to be is an important skill. Yeah, know? there's something that I'd come, and pro- because I'd been doing it too much myself, you know, often these things that we um, maybe look into or maybe have thoughts and opinions on is stuff that like is affecting us. and this thing around distract attention, but also distraction yeah. and the phone, like what you're describing there is it's, if it's in the periphery, it has the potential to be distracting anyway. And something that I've, I guess this always comes back to like my strength and conditioning background as a coach of there's things like specific adaptation to impose demands that we talk about in training and this type of thing, where basically whatever you get the body to do. And it, mm-hmm. I always think of it in strength terms, it's a bit easier. Like if you make it, 
pick up a slightly stronger, uh, heavier weight each week, you gradually, you know, it gets, it adapts to that. So if I basically practice distracting myself, I, I pick up the phone every time my brain goes, Ooh, what it, maybe someone's likes your last post. And I, I, I pick the more I do that. I'm just, and I can get frustrated about that. But mm-hmm. when, I, when you, when I zoom out and look at it, you go, well, you're just getting really good at getting distracted because you're practicing being distracted. Like exactly. don't, don't be annoyed at yourself or yeah. way, this is how I'm talking to myself. Like, don't be annoyed at yourself. Like change <laughs> what you're doing because all you, the, you always get better at what you do, whether the yeah. thing is good for you or not. Well, that's a different matter. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I was trying to get at. And you put it in much better terms. Than no, I no, did. no. But you're talking a lot about changing habits and stuff is, is a lot, you know, a lot of stuff I've seen. It's a habit. And I'll, and I'll say two things that will blow your mind. One, more than 50% of interruptions are actually internally generated. So we call them self interruptions. So you go, oh, I should make a coffee real quick. Or, oh, where's the dog? Oh, um, you know, and we're kind of like yeah, trying yeah. to find ways to just not do the task at hand. Yeah. You know, um, the, the, the War of Art talks about resistance. It's a wonderful book. If you haven't read it, Steve Pressfield, he's amazing. And it's all about this resistance that you need to overcome. What's, to it, what's the book called? The, the War of Art. The War yeah. of Art. Yeah, it's okay. I'm pretty sure. I'll check it. Yeah. It's, it's a great book, but he talks about resistance and how we have this internal resistance. Um, and I see that in myself. But the second thing that I wanted to say is, and there's, oh my God, there's so many things I want to say. But the second thing I wanted to say is that I've just recently downloaded TikTok because I'm going to start using it for my reels. But Following me? I am not. I've got like, <laughs> I'm like 100 followers at the moment. I'll, I'll get to that point. <laughs> but so TikTok is, you know, supposedly very addictive, right? Of course it is, you know, but, but I have not, I've been having it for three months. And I've not clicked on it like maybe once a week where I'm like, oh, I should check my check my TikTok. <laughs> yeah, it's not a habit. I'm not in a habit of going on it. And I'm very specifically not going on TikTok to scroll. I'll go on. I'll check how my posts are doing. You know, now I'm going to go on and find you and follow you. And then I'm going to jump straight off because I yeah. don't want to create a habit where I just start spending time on TikTok because that's going to yeah. be another yeah. rabbit hole I'm going to go down. Right. I've already got Instagram to worry about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and, and I find that super fascinating because it is literally just what you ingrain and what you, what you, what you practice. I haven't practiced going on TikTok. So the, the, yeah. the habits are there. It's not even automatically integrated in what I do every day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Does, um, semi-personal question, but does well, the thing I like about you, are you very open? So yeah. this isn't, <laughs> this isn't, it's not that personal question, but what you're alluding to there a little bit is. And I find this with like coaching, you know, yeah. people sometimes get surprised at like, you know, coaches need coaches. Yeah, um, yeah. Does, does someone that's a neuroscientist that is, you know, specializing in sort of some of these changing of habit, everything that you understand and know, mm. the practical application for it for yourself, does it still, do you still find like it's hard? I, I still find I fall into the same traps as everybody else. At times, in terms of what exactly. in terms of um, in terms of things like like you said, obviously you've you've you per- very purposefully not going letting TikTok as an example distract you, yeah. but just yeah. other things that we all sort of yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not I'm not just because I post about staying off Instagram and social media doesn't mean I'm immune to it, and you know I've just done my research on it, which you know I have been following my own advice, but I'm also you yeah. know can you fall into those traps where I am like scrolling and I'm like, what am I doing? And I can't get up. Yeah. I'm loving it. Ah, just <laughs> uh, and I've implemented very, very strict rules around phone use in this house, which are not being adhered to at the moment, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that's somebody else that's not a dairy. <laughs> exactly. I get, I get a bit frustrated, but I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm going to put my foot down because it really terrifies me how much time we spend on our phones and how mm. we're on our attentional resources, you know, cycling back to that mental currency. If you're spending so much time on your phone, and you know, it, it's a cliche, but like, what else could you be doing? Mm. What's really interesting is I've been writing, uh, you know, my research, and it's it, it's been a huge feat after writing a sixty thousand word book. Yeah, and it's gotten to the point where like I'll come down in the morning. We're living, we're living with, well, I'm living with my in-laws um, at the moment, and I'll come down in the morning in the kitchen, and I don't, I can't even engage in conversation, like. George's mum will start talking to me. I'd be like, yeah, gotta go. And I'll like, just like rudely 
take myself out of the room and go and sit down because I don't have the capacity right now to deal with extra things. So I've got, I've got like 19 unread messages on my WhatsApp, <laughs> but I just can't. And like Instagram is very minimal, you know, I'm hardly going on it. So, you know, I'm not saying that we need to do this as an extreme. That's just that mm-hmm. the unprecedented, unprecedented time that I'm in is requiring, requiring unprecedented sort of um, focus, if you will. Yeah. 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 No, but no, I like me that I only have so much capacity for attention. Yeah. And I'm deep in a hole. I mean, I write for th- three hours sometimes. I look up and I'm like, oh my God, what's the time? And it's amazing. I, I will never yeah. be there again unless I write another thesis. But <laughs> yeah. it just goes to show. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, well, there's two things that's making me think of. One is about that. That book that I said to read about flow is talking about like get it like getting into that flow state is exactly what you described there of like three hours just goes boom yeah because you're like you're fully in it and nothing else is mattering it's it's a it's a really nice place to be and um, from I used to play pro rugby and sports is often and in, in, in games and things as where people you get you sometimes get to that place where they're few and mm-hmm. far between. Mm-hmm. Um, because we don't get taught how to yeah, actively get there. Mm-hmm. And probably the thing that we do now, if someone's sat in the change rooms before a football or rugby game or something, they're probably sat on the phone. Yeah. 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 Rather yeah. than doing something to yeah. facilitate being uh-huh. closer to be able to get into that, yeah. to that flow so I, state. I do not go on my phone for the first hour before working out. Cause if I do that, my workout is completely different to if I've been sitting there scrolling and mm. it's really hard. Cause I want to, of course I want to, everyone wants to be on their phones all the time and scroll in between sets. But if I do that, it just completely messes up my session. An interesting thing is that, uh, what I wanted to say is that dopamine actually warps time or how we perceive time. It doesn't actually warp right. time. It, it warps how we perceive time. And that's why you can go into this kind of like, and then come out and be like, oh my God, where did time go? And it's the reason why individuals with ADHD normally have problems with timekeeping. So they'll be late or, you know, because they can't, they can't visualize how much time something takes. So, uh, you know, my partner's not diagnosed, but we we have, we have a feeling he might have ADHD, but the interesting thing is that he'll always be like, I'll do this, 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 and I'll be with you by 2 PM. And I'm going, no, you won't, because that is not going to take an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll take like three, <laughs> but he yeah. has the concept of how long things take because it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a mechanism in the dopamine system, which is really, really fascinating. So anyone that's got ADHD and has timekeeping problems, please, you know, be, be kind to yourself, you know, not, don't excuse it, but just, yeah. it just a little kind of heads up as to why. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the other thing that you just sort of made me think that just to potentially encourage people with and something I've been doing a little bit, particularly because of the time of year is as we record this now, it's the 10th of January, it'll probably go out in a few weeks time, but it's the 10th of January as we record this. And uh, in the UK schools have only just gone back because of the way Christmas. So most people it's still super, well, it's only 10 days into the new year, but it's that time of year where we are probably maybe doing some sort of reflecting and planning and to, I'd never really done it, before until reading this book and speaking with you of going let's let's be let's let's reflect on and maybe have a look at where are you really putting your attention in that if it is has a certain limit then mm-hmm. well what things do you want to do and enjoy the most and mm-hmm. ensure that you're putting you know planning to actually put some of that attention and don't let other things steal their attention is there any advice you've got for people like because i think it's very easy for me to go oh don't let xyz steal your attention but yeah that's just words it's more the the habit of that and from maybe from a neuroscience perspective how people could go about that yeah well i i have a big belief that we are actually a lot mentally stronger than we make ourselves out to be and the Mm. interesting thing is that we have a self-correcting area in part in the brain or a system in the brain that can self-correct so after having had this conversation, the next time you're mindlessly scrolling on Instagram, you are m- more likely to think, oh, okay, no, actually I shouldn't do that. And even if you don't get it right the first time around, what mm-hmm. they've seen is with individuals that don't reach goals, the only thing that really helps that is perseverance. So okay. sticking with it and, and self-correcting, not beating yourself about it and thinking, okay, you know what, in due course through neuroplastic changes, 
I can change this habit, even though it feels impossible right now. But you, if you think about it, have practiced. You know, one of my friends um, made a post once about how if you spend 10 minutes every day uh, or an hour, sorry, every day on social media versus an hour every day playing in the guitar in five years time, how good will you be at scrolling social media versus playing the guitar? Okay, and it's a reason why I've embarked on playing guitar now. I, I play every day and I'm completely obsessed. I'm actually going to start a challenge. I haven't announced it yet, but it's not really official or anything, but I'm almost 32. So I'm not that old, but loads of people think that by the, by the time you're 30, it's like too late. And I'm trying to prove it to, to people mm. that it, it's not. At the age of 30, I am going to learn to play so well that I could probably rock up with my partner at home. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably never be a musician and that's fine. I'm never going to be Jimi Hendrix. Of course, there's like limits to this, but I can get to a point where I can play well, you know, enjoy it. So well, it's been my New Year's. I've got a guitar over there in the corner. It's been my New Year's resolution for the last three years yeah. to learn to play it and I can't do anything on it, but I haven't practiced. I, I can't even tell you the last time I touched it, let alone yeah. tried to play it. So that I've, um, I'm I'm slightly ahead of you um, in life years of, of 41. So, um, <laughs> but I, yeah, one of the, um, we've sort of flown into things. Yeah. There's something I wanted to um, ask you about, but I don't know whether you want to just pull it back a little bit. Yeah. Um, Yes, well, I, let me, uh, it was just that um, what you're talking about there was the, one of the first times I came across the term sort of around neuroplasticity mm -hmm. was um, Norman Doidge's book, if I'm saying his name right, The Brain, Brain. That Changes Its Calf. Yeah. yeah, like. Great book. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Great book. I read that book a few years ago and it was, it was amazing. Yeah. There was like, I remember one of the stories, something like, people that there was someone that couldn't see mm -hmm. and they like did made some like electrodes on their tongue or something and was able to like bypass the bit that wasn't working in their brain to pro to, to process like sight and then right. was able to help them you know not see per but to see something and yeah. it was like yeah. what the hell is going on here i can't remember exactly but basically something like that yeah yeah, so we, we have, you know, cortical real estate, if you will, for lack of a better term, in our brains, available to rewire, to change. Now, there are things that are developed through your critical developmental stages, you know, things like language, vision, sight, you know, sensation, heart rate, breathing, all of that. A lot of those can't be changed, um, you know, unless through injury and then you're re re rewiring. But they have shown that, you know, individuals with strokes or individuals that, you know, uh, lose sight, you can improve either that area again or other areas take over. So, you know, the, the classic one is when individuals go blind, they develop a very super fine tactile discrimination. I mean, have you ever tried to read Braille? I have no idea what's going yeah. on. <laughs> you know, someone who has lost sight, let's say they have damage to the eyes, the, the visual cortex is still available for rent in that respect. Right. So tactile discrimination is going to overtake that part of the brain that is available to be used because the brain wants to be maximized at all times. So if an area is not being used, something else is going to take over. And that is why they can really feel exactly what's going on. You know, they can read, right? Which, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I'm trying to play guitar and even though I could do you know, trying to discriminate between two, two chords, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Two, two, yeah, strings. I'm like, well, where's my finger in space you know i have no idea so, yeah 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 it's mad isn't it pretty um, pretty interesting well and your uh you mentioned the the term there rewire which is obviously the title of your uh book isn't it it is indeed it is indeed you know we're, we're all capable of neuroplasticity every single brain neurodivergent neurotypical well into old age they're looking at using it as a therapeutic intervention for individuals with dementia so yeah. You know, up until you know, there's no sort of finite number on when we can, you know, um, measure plasticity, but it, you know, we can see it well into old age, which is, which is great. Yeah. So that... that's sort of, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, and just thinking I actually do want to change, but, you know, it might be a bit harder to, to, to some degree, depending on how many other habits you have ingrained, but it's not impossible. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, someone like myself, I don't know if you know my, my history, but like, over 10 years ago, brain injury um, ended rugby career and puts me in a classification with hundreds and thousands of other people that are 
susceptible to early onset of dementia because of repeated um, yeah. head traumas. And so, you know, I've done a lot of work on um, breathing to restore some of that brain function, but that's more to do with like CO2 levels and re restoring oxygen supply and blood supply to the brain through those mechanisms. But, and that's, there's, there's obviously must've been some sort of neuroplasticity going on within that, 100%. but then there should be things that we're doing yeah, to keep the to keep that going, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people listening um, on that. And it's not; it doesn't have to be sports people. Like people yeah. bang their head on the kitchen top or whatever. Like it happens all the time, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, there there are two things. So exercise, predominantly aerobic exercise, yeah. increases something called BDNF, brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is essentially just a protein that binds to the postsynaptic neuron and helps cell growth. Okay. You can't regenerate neurons, but you can regenerate synapses. So do we know? Do we know? Sorry, do we know if is that so that um, aerobic work, if that's mm -hmm. done nasally compared to mouth, we know that there's some differences physiologically. Uh -huh. Does does it? Do we know whether it affects that specifically or not? I was getting to that, and you. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. So that's <laughs> Right, but basically, it has been proposed, and I think you know, it's still very, very sort of new research, that uh, breathwork increases um, BDNF in the brain as well, which yes. is great. Exactly. So, and, and the other thing is staying engaged with life. So, you know, when they look at older individuals, the ones that have stayed active, physically active throughout life, but also cognitively active, so through social connection, through having a purpose are the ones that have higher levels of plasticity. And they can measure that in postmortem brains by actually looking at synaptic proteins in the brain. So that they're not just sort of, you know, uh, um, correlating. They, they're looking at the pathophysiology of the brain postmortem of older individuals and seeing that the uh -huh. ones who are active actually have more proteins, thus more synaptic integrity with better uh -huh. communication going on in the brain because dementia and other neurodegenerative diseases come down to a lack of communication and then therefore sort of cell death. Right. So I Does, think um, it would be fine. I mean, I mean, I can't, you know, I can't say for sure, but yeah, no, um, there's something that I've, uh, I've got one last little bit and then we're going to shift gears and talk about shifting states, but, um, mm. the, the whole thing around like where you're putting your attention and, and, and all of that, and this neuroplasticity, I found that, you know, God, years ago, I couldn't engage in meditation. I tried, like sat down, what, put a YouTube meditation on, there's waves in the background. I sat there for like three seconds and was like bored. Yeah. <laughs> and I just couldn't do it. And then since getting, going down this rabbit hole of like trying to improve my breathing, uh -huh. part and parcel of trying to improve your breathing, some of it is done yes out running but some of it's done sat still just to yeah. make it easier and then i got used to sitting still and focusing on something very simple like breathing because i was trying to improve my breathing where and so now i sort of look forward to doing some meditation not always but look forward to doing meditation sometimes, sometimes don't want to but still try yeah. to and anyway but what i've found noticed is and it'd be quite interesting from a neuro perspective like what is potentially going on the more time i create to be still and almost do close to nothing, but certainly not be distracted because I'm just sat looking at the wall or whatever. Not at the time, but sometime later that day, or just generally, I will have much better creative ideas for things. Yeah. What's yeah. going on there? Okay, so you have a, a network of brain areas in your brain called the default mode network. The default mode network is essentially your default state, your idling state. What are you thinking about when you're not thinking about anything? You know, those kind of thoughts that pop up when you're washing the dishes and doing mundane things, okay? That's your default mode network. Now, it has connectivity with other areas of the brain. Uh, you know, for some people, that area can be upregulated in a way that causes more negative self-referential information, rumination, uh, you know, negative kind of autobiographical memories, thinking about the past, the future, and remembering all those kind of embarrassing things that you did. That's the default mode network. But 
the default mode airport can also, yes, I know at that time they can cancel the underground. You're like, oh, fuck, are you in it? <laughs> oh, and I, I start shivering. I go, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we live and we learn. Um, and then, but the thing is, the default mode network is also responsible for creativity. So it's how how right. is it being regulated? Of course, the way that we can measure it is very is very difficult. It's it's hard. We're still, you know still very sort of in neuroscience is just very complicated. But yeah. what we've seen is that things like self hypnosis, things like meditation, quieten down default mode network. So they kind of turn down that ruminative state, so individuals can actually have a default mode network if they're. And again, I put this for anyone that's listening and not watching. I'm putting this in inverted commas yeah. for lack of a better term. You are allowing the default mode network to be what it needs to be, which is creative rather than ruminative. Okay, and that's my speculation. It's like, you know, what we're yeah. extrapolating from what we know about the default mode network, you know, but that's, that's it. And I think yeah. that that's amazing that you said that because it's, it's what I talk about all the time. And you've just gone and said that before I, even I said it, because you could have, <laughs> You know said and be like yeah i agree because i have this moment but it came from you and i'm like yes <laughs> it, 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 it's not it, it's a nice thing to have noticed because it um motivates motivates me for me to do something yeah. that feels in the moment very unproductive yeah um, as in i'm not doing anything and i i, I like being productive but yeah. i'm also questioning myself yeah. as i get older about why do you place so much value on productivity? But yeah. and you know, not because some yeah, everything in I everything know. in moderation, <laughs> even moderation. <laughs> <laughs> With the whole conversation as well. <laughs> yeah. I tell people to do all the time. If you're lacking creativity, step away, close your yeah. eyes, go inwards. You know, everyone wants to go out. Go in. What have you got inside? There's so much in there already, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love the notion when people sort of post things on social media that says almost like, you know, everything that you need to know you already know like it's already inside like a, you know, seems, I, I like yeah. that type of notion now I, I, I you know 10 years ago i'd have said you're bonking crazy like it's yeah, funny how yeah. things change but i i love that notion because if you think about it how much information again have you brought in maybe and you can't consciously access all the time you know there are memories in your brain that you can't think of right now but if i gave you a particular smell you're gonna be like oh my god that took me back to that time when i was nine nine years old with my grandmother you know yeah, yeah, random yeah. but you can't access that all the time so you know information is still in there so if we go in we have a better chance of being able to kind of sift through that stuff and let things pop up and be like oh oh yeah i do have a creative mm. idea because i do think that as humans we get so used to relying on other people so sometimes i'll, I'll write something in my post like I think once I said something like create art. Uh, yes, art. I remember you talking about this. <laughs> and yes. I was like, what do you mean by be art? And I'm like, that's the whole point. I didn't reply. I was like, just <laughs> help. <laughs> like, you don't always need me. And so I know that people want validation. They want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. You know, yeah. I had a different conversation with someone and they were like, I knew that. But now that you've just said that that applies to me, I realize how important that is because people can't always piece the information together. But I think we get too used to waiting for someone else to confirm yeah so being you know uh, uh sure of ourselves with yeah trusting ourselves trusting our intuition yeah yeah we have all the answers yeah not all obviously but you know some <laughs> enough the, the, yes. we have the, we've the, probably we've probably got the answers that we need exactly. the answers that we don't have we probably don't need but we're searching for <laughs> And if we want them, we can find them. Yeah, <laughs> Google it. <laughs> www. Yeah, the World um, Wide Web is really readily available. Oh, readily available. <laughs> yeah. I, there was a guy on the, walking down the beach when we were on holiday in France uh, in the summer, and his t shirt I wanted to buy it off him. His t shirt said, he was walking along literally with his, presumably his wife, because his t shirt said, I don't need Google and add Google in the Google sort of font. I don't need Google. My wife knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Love it. Love it. Uh, so shifting gears or shifting what? states. Eight? We were yeah. supposed to talk about this right at the beginning was our very, <laughs> very loose plan that we had, but we've, we've gone. But um, Come full yeah, circle. We, with breathing, with breath work, we talk about a lot how breathing can influence the the autonomic nervous system. I talk a lot about breathing as a reflection of the the nervous system, and you know it's, mm -hmm. it's a two way conversation. So if I my breathing is affected when I'm 
stressed or my nervous system is upregulated, I can choose mm. to do something with my breathing to, to, to change that. And I would only really just talk about breathing. Um, you know, yeah. you wanted to give us a, a you, you've got some nice real life example of, and this is what I like yeah. about you also just being vulnerable, being honest about that. This is what's going on for me. And this is some of the things. And then by you sharing that, we all yeah. get to benefit from. Well, yeah, as you know, Jacko, I sent you a voice message before just kind of reminding you or sorry, letting you know that the, the place I'm in, I've just just written a lot of words and I've been in a really weird place where I, you know, and I'm not condoning this kind of behavior, but it's got to the point where like, I've, I forgot to eat yesterday. I went to tennis and I was like, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? And then I was, you know, I just I just keep forgetting to eat. And again, I'm not saying it's good, but that's the state I've been in because I've been so busy with this thesis and I've been loving it, like completely absorbed in it. So when I knew that we were doing the podcast, I had to kind of think, okay, I need to shift out of that state that I've been in for the last week and shift into, I'm going to have a conversation with somebody so that I don't make a complete ass of myself on the podcast. <laughs> so I gave you a little heads up. And, and what I did was, um, you know, a little reverie session, self-hypnosis session that helps you refocus your mind. So they have an activity called be present. And what I love about uh, hypnosis is that it helps you visualize how you're going to reenact your day or your habits and, and, and be in that position. So the activity was saying, like, think about somebody you're going to be talking to. And I was like picturing you in my mind's eye going, <laughs> having this conversation with Jacko. I'm going to be fully engrossed. And, you know, I, it, I'd love to conduct an experiment where we had jumped on, gone back in time, jumped on this call without me having done that. Yeah. And, because I'm completely absorbed into this right now. <laughs> yeah. But there were concerns from my end before we started the podcast, you know, because I was like, oh, what if I start forgetting things? And I haven't forgotten a single thing yet, which is great. So, you know, and that's the thing is I want people to understand that you can shift your state. You're in this place, you're stressed or busy or whatever, but you can redirect to something like this and then redirect back. That's the that's the key point I want mm. people to understand, because if you're going to decide to go on Instagram, that's fine. You're now shifting your state to that attention you have the ability to shift back yeah oftentimes people don't think they do and that's where the fear comes in so i'm telling you you have the power to get off your phone and get back to your work it's just that sometimes it's a construct that we've built up in our minds to say oh well no now like really i can't do that now and continues to scroll yeah. and then <clears throat> back to the breath 100%, you saw it. I was trying to find a, a spot in this house with Wi-Fi and I was going, <laughs> you know, subconsciously, yeah. uh, which I know consciously that I it's me dumping carbon dioxide saying, you yeah. know, we don't need to get stressed about the situation. And it's funny because I've written about this in my book. My dog, Kobe, is a Border Collie. And he's very kind of like sensitive to, to sounds and just emotions. Uh, we call him the in-house therapist. <clears throat> and <laughs> whenever I used to sigh, I'd go, <sighs> he would get really kind of like, oh my God. But now he's ah. learned, I do it as an exercise that th that isn't associated with negativity. I don't know if in his previous house, maybe the yeah. sighing was associated with huffing and puffing and kind of negative energy. But yeah. in our house, sighing is a good thing. We're like, no, we're getting rid of this. You know, when the dogs shake, I'm like, yes, I, I reward yeah. them, I shake it off. You know, it's the same yeah, way yeah. as going, <sighs> breathing yeah. that out. So yeah. we can shift, we can shift our states. Yeah. No, I love that notion that you say that it's so simple, but the, the the best bits of information and advice are like we, we often give more credit to things that are more complicated. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas actually more complicated things are harder to, to implement, but just appreciate, you know, if you add on too much, like the, the basics are there. It's yeah. just that we haven't made them sexy, and I'm bringing sexy back. <laughs> <laughs> like, Timber Lake. <laughs> sexy back. Um, I was having a conversation with my manager saying, you know, it's, it's the, you know, Peter Ati has just written an amazing book. His book is about exercise, nutrition, uh, sleep, social connection, and meditation. None of that is sexy to the, you know, the general population because yeah. we start putting in like probiotics, this, and, morning yeah. electrolytes that and i'm not saying any of those things are bad but get the basics right first yeah. and i've just gone off on a bit of a tangent no, but no. it's sexy to do these things and know that when you're stressed you go okay i need to breathe and then i'll be okay you've yeah. got that in your back pocket why wouldn't you use it yeah yeah and i think that i think that well, um on the on the sexy thing so the, i was thinking of um one of the great things about neuroscience at the moment it, that's lots of good things obviously but, but it's been there's been a bit of a 
we never used to hear from. So one of the one of the scientists I'd love to speak to is a guy, Xavier Warons. He's like basically devoted his life to mm -hmm. understanding the impact of breath holding and hypoxic training on wow. sporting name? Xavier Warons. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Oh. And, um, but you know, he's in a lab and writes papers. He ain't on Instagram, he ain't got a YouTube channel, and he's not probably interested in doing that at all. Like, and that's, yeah. you know, and also, like, that's fair play, it's no problem. But, um, Patrick. Like yeah, sorry. So yeah, yeah, no, just um, Patrick McEwen has spoke to actually. We might, we might have the chance to 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 interview him on podcast, which would be cool. But within neuroscience, people like yourselves, and then probably someone that a lot of people have heard of, like Huberman, with 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 the podcast, like yeah. So <laughs> it's like it's making it's just taking out any sort of middleman, and like people like you guys are just coming and going. Here you go. Here's here's the information, and and making it yeah. simple. And you know, back to compliments. I yeah. talked about your um, smile before. You've yeah. um, you've definitely got Uberman in the sexy stakes, so uh, you can take yeah. that one, can't you? <laughs> you just put me in the same category as Uberman. I'm like, no, I above, <laughs> above it. You oh, that. Yeah, yeah. That's very kind. That's very kind. Um, yeah, and you know what? It is. It is just making the, the the simple stuff sexy because, you know, in my coaching career, I was, you know thinking, how can I make this look better? And how can I, and then I, and then I got to the point where I was like, you know what, you're a high functioning individual, but you ain't got any of your shit together. You're not sleeping right. You're not thinking about yourself, right? That's for me is a huge fundamental. Like, can you sit in a room with yourself? Can you meditate and not, yeah. you know, uh, fight with yourself? Yeah. Um, you know, are you sleeping? Are you eating correctly? Are you, are you hydrating correctly? You know, a 2% dehydration can just cause cognitive dysfunction, not dysfunction, but uh, yeah, cognitive yeah. So, you know, if you're, and it's, and I've realized that it is just making sure that we've got those things readily available so that when you feel a particular way, your automatic processing is this. And I, what I mean is I was feeling really like kind of irritable, annoyed. I don't even know what it was in, in past times. It would have been like, let me go on my phone or let me eat. I love a an emotional eat, you know, <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> And my brain went, oh my God, I can't wait for my tennis lesson today because that's going to help. And I've spent years creating a habit around just the thought process of, I feel X, I don't feel mm. good, revert to positive. Because the automatic yeah. is to think that because you feel bad, you need to revert to more bad to yeah. make yourself feel better. When you can shift your state by thinking, ah, something like tennis is going to make me feel amazing. Yeah. No, when I was like it. Sorry. No, yeah, and no, it reiterates that point that you made that um, I wanted to come back to of that, you know, you said, say something like an automatic habit of like picking up my phone and then being like, oh, no, I don't want to, I don't actually want to be doing that because, you know, for X, Y, Z. But you said like realizing and hearing you say it, just like hammers at home going like, well, you've got the conscious choice, like maybe automatically you sort of picked this thing up, but you've got the conscious choice to put that down and focus your attention where you want to. And you said, you know, go back to work, you know, mm -hmm. but that could be go and back to the real world that is literally underneath your feet and right in front of your eyes. You know, I'm very lucky that we moved six months ago to North Wales. And if I look out the when the weather's not pretty screaming, I'm going to look out the window at the moment. The weather's pretty, it's cold. It's good. Like, I can yeah, see I the sea that. and I can see the mountains and it's freaking Amazing. unbelievable. It's like, Amazing. it helps me massively. Yeah. I feel alive when I, yeah. when, and you don't get, you don't feel alive like that when you look at a little screen. No, no, you don't. And you might feel nice for a little bit. You know, there are times where I'm like, I am loving this. And <laughs> you know, and I'm sending George reels and he's sending me stuff and we're like, ha ha ha, this is hilarious. But yeah. you know, it's time and place. And that's all I want is I want people to be conscious about yeah. these types of things. There's no bad, there's no wrong. Of course, too much is wrong, you know, by, by definition, but it, it's just paying attention to yeah. where you're putting your attention. Yeah. And I want to just say, like, yeah, I when like I was that. traveling loads, I was, um, I had a chat with Dr. Spiegel, you know, from Reverie. Um, we, we're working, I'm working with him, which is a, a huge honor, but I was saying that while I was traveling, reverie was the kind of thing that I was falling back on. So I was staying in a lot of hotels. I was away for six weeks. And that's my dog in the background, by the way, if you're hearing weird sort of snoring noises. And um, 
I kept reverting back to reverie whenever I need it because it was my constant in a place of not chaos, but change. You know, I was in a different hotel, I wasn't sleeping right, but because I had the reverie app, I could do my sleep session and then sleep the way that I would if I were at home. No. Um, the, yeah, it, it's all these, all these things when we start to, when we put the list, like you say, the, the simple things together. Um, I think that what I, I, I like about what you're highlighting though, from a terms of, um, getting our points across as maybe a coach or an educator or an author or whatever. The thing yeah. is that like making it to use your word, sexy doesn't have to be that, but making it palatable for people or sexy or whatever that thing is, I think is, is, is an interesting, um, yeah, an interesting point to make an angle and actually brings me nicely onto the, something I wanted to ask you about, um, as maybe a little, little final thought on you, which is, uh, maybe it will be, maybe the answer will be neuroscience related, but just, there'll be a lot, there's a lot of people that listen to the podcast that, um, are coaches. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the coaches will be fantastic at coaching, but they're likely to be a lot, a large percentage of them self-employed or run their own business. And they got to do the marketing. I got to do, you know, I'm a one man band pretty much, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I'm doing the stuff and I might not be good at making the videos and the social media and the marketing and my email and, and all these things, but feel like I need to. And, you know, we, we laughed before we, we hit uh, record when we first spoke maybe two years ago, perhaps, or something like that, maybe 18 months ago, it's, it's something in that region. You might be able to recall better, but I can't, you know, you didn't, you must have had less than 100,000 followers and now you're close to half a million, which yeah. is, a, you know, is, is an astronomical difference in terms of the people that you're able to reach. Um, really interested to hear for, well, myself as well, and and, the, and these types of people where maybe we find social media hard, but mm. it's, if you are self-employed, mm. it's important to be able to get your message out there. Like what are some yeah. of the things that you found helped you? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm having a bit of a mare with social media at the moment because I think I've got to the point where I, I can't just put anything out. I have to be really kind of thoughtful and then, but I don't also have to be really thoughtful because everything I put out is going to be great. But then I start overthinking it and then it's a whole thing <laughs> in my own head. So, you know, I'm, I'm having a bit of a, but I also know that I've been completely absorbed into something else, which has been writing. So I haven't yeah, had the thesis. to think about yeah. my social media, which I will now that it's, um, you know, cleared up on that department. But <clears throat> when I first started in the college neuroscience, I was kind of, doing silly videos to my friends and I, I could I wanted to I really wanted to communicate science because I, I was so passionate about it and good at it but I just could not get on board with you know being on camera I mean I, I was like wearing festival gear to try and get the messages across because I was like this is just so cringe yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had to have this real chat with myself where I was like Nick you know it's you're gonna have to embody being this person because you're not going to be able to get there if you don't yeah. so I had to kind of pretend like I was posting to an audience, even though I was posting to my 800 followers. I think I had a little bit more than that. I had like 2000 followers. And I was like, I've just got to get through it. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter if they're going to be like, oh, like, look at her thinking that she's like all that. And I only <laughs> 10 followers in a month, you know, so <laughs> because I started posting as if I had an audience. And, you know, this is like, maybe classified information that I don't mind sharing. But the first time I got called to do a public talk, um a woman contacted me and she's like oh can you do a public talk like are you used to and I was like oh my god yeah because I, I had public speaker in my bio and I'd never done it before <laughs> I needed work in public speaking right. that's what I wanted to do yeah. so I, I kind of put it on there saying you know I do public speaking um you know not trying to say I was an, an avid yeah, to let people know that this is something you would do yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and she was like oh do you, do you want to do public speaking it's a bit like it's a little bit like the Gary Vee story I don't know if you've heard about it but and uh, she she said like uh, you know we'll, we'll pay you X and I was like oh my god that's quite a lot of money for me anyway it wasn't it's not actually that much money in the grand scheme of things when it comes to public speaking but I was like wow I'd never done a talk in my life before but I was like yeah I'll do it but even just in saying that it it helped me embody this person that had been doing public speaking 
So when I did it, of course, there were levels of nerves, but I, I, I nailed it, actually. Like, if I say so myself, I'm like, <laughs> <I did laughs> quite well, considering I'd never spoken to a group of, like, corporates. Three cheers um, for Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's when I kind of, in hindsight, realized that it is embodying something that you're potentially not yet you know, and there's, ele- there's, there's layers to that, right? And there's lines to be drawn in the sand, like, don't pretend you're a scientist if you're not, but, you yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And say, like, I work with high-level executives and athletes, right? Or I want to work with, or I'm looking to work with, because wait, maybe, that, that, maybe not, that's not a good idea. That's not a good example. But do you see what I'm getting at? No, like, I see what you said, yeah. Yeah, you can't say you work with athletes and then you don't, because then you, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> you might bugger that one up. But... You know, the, the concept is that you have to kind of imagine being some somebody else to some degree. And what's really interesting is that now I'm going through the process where I've moved over to video content. And I know that if I do it well, I could blow up to a million. But I'm having to embody being Nicole's neuroscience that has a million followers before I get there. Because I don't know if I can get there without believing that I can be there, you know? Mm. I don't know if that's given you any tools. I've kind of interesting. Babbled, but it, it's the belief of where yeah. you you can go with it yeah you know? and Almost i think that's seeing into the future yeah and i think that's what i'm struggling with her social media because i, do, I i've kind of lost a little bit of the love with it at the moment and i know that i will get it back but i'm doing things out of like oh i have to stay engaged i should grow and i'm not doing things out of love at the moment hmm. so once i've now handed in this research it's all done the copy editor will be done by monday i'm going to start really re- sort of honing in on that creative side of me again when it comes to social media and doing things because i want to regardless of what the lashback might be or the you know because it's that thought of like oh will people like this like will they hate it like oh they don't like it and those are the things that you just have to do get through of course you need to get feedback from you know what you're doing because if it's really bad (laughs) it's not going to do well but a lot of the times it is just doing things from a place of love and creativity for lack of you know more depth to that (laughs) but that's yeah cliche as it sounds yeah 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 you know? no no it's good um it's made me think i wasn't gonna i didn't have any other questions it's made me think of one question of um like negative bias why is it that i had one video that, that went as viral as i've done um which is like four million odd views or whatever and so a lot of comments and yeah. a gazillion really nice comments yeah like literally can't believe it this has changed the way I breathe, it's changed my life. And loads yeah. of them. And I'm yeah. like, wicked, wicked, love it, love it, love it, great, great. And then it's like, look at this guy, he's a knobhead. Or whatever, like some sort of negative comment. And the attention, there's that word again, that I give the one negative comment out of maybe a thousand or ten or whatever it is, yeah. is, is not, um, it doesn't make sense. Well, it's, but it's I'm how, drawn to give it attention. Why is that? It's how we survive, right? Because they, they are now infiltrating on your well-being, right? So I had a similar situation when I was running a group coaching course and I had so many messages uh, saying, oh my God, like this is the best thing I've ever done. And I had one really, it was it was a very vile email from someone's partner who was like, you're scamming people, wanted a refund. And I was like, you know what, if you'd asked, I would have just given you the refund. You don't have to be so mean. Yeah. But that made me realize that it was it was now, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like um, messing with my 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 uh, livelihood, you know, right, it yeah. was like my, my way of surviving financially yes. yeah, at the time, yeah. you know. Um, so there's an element of like, this is how you survive. So your brain has to pay attention to these things so that it knows what to do and what not to do so it can learn from the situation you know and as humans we have you know there's different models proposed models of emotions and they're very complicated but if we simplify it down we can break it down to eight basic emotions some say six some say seven five doesn't matter but what it does matter is that only two of those are positive okay right well, three of them uh, two of them are positive and one of them is like positive or negative because surprise can be either positive or negative it could be surprise that was not very nice or surprise wow i can't believe you're here <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the rest of them the other five are negative emotions so we have a tendency right. to weigh more towards negative emotions and it's just practice 
to being able to go, okay, yes, that one guy called me a knobhead, but actually I'm not going to please everybody. Right. You know, yeah. and I had that recently, I had um, <laughs> my post, I was giggling earlier when you're saying get out into the real world, because I made a post called real dopamine. Uh, yeah. and, and it was obviously a metaphor about getting off your phone and yeah. getting out into the real world. And I had some people who were deeply upset with the fact that I miss communicating science um, oh. to the population because apparently it's well, one person is spreading misinformation about dopamine, which is just, you know, yeah. right. Um, but you, uh, over the years, I've learned to just, you know, detach, you have yeah. to, because otherwise I'm paying attention to some person on the internet and losing sleep over it, impacting my thesis impacting my book impacting oh, relationships my with yeah yeah because of one person that i'm never ever 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 going to see or speak to ever again you know yeah. when you put it into realization like that or reality like that but you know back to reverie and yeah. this is why the reverie exercises are so good because they help you visualize what you could be like yeah. in the future what you could be like if you didn't have the anxiety if you if you what you could okay. be like yeah. if you did sleep well because a lot of these things kind of become self kind of uh self-fulfilled in our brains and then we this touches on my book is this narrative that we give ourselves so i am this and then it holds you back or i am that and it holds you back but you know and it's hard for our brains to imagine that we could be something else if we've never been there mm. that's why self-hypnosis actually helps you visualize what you could be like and what it really does back to attention is that it quietens down that salience network so you know that feeling of when you're like in a in a cinema and nothing else exists and you come out and you're like oh my god yeah. i don't want to see anything else but james bond <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm gonna become a spy <laughs> that's yeah. the salience network sort of toning in on what you're doing right, right there and through self-hypnosis we can strengthen However, we decide to use that, that, that salience network so you can become deeply absorbed in your projects, goals, mm. etc. You can tackle habits, you can tackle who you are as a person. And that's what I love so much about it because it aligns so closely with my work, but it's also yeah. clinically backed by Dr. David Spiegel, who has 45 years of clinical experience at Stanford Medicine, you know, so he's not just like mm. pulling this out of the air and made an yeah. app. He's like yeah. the chair of psychiatry. So. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Um, so yeah, anyone that wants to try it out, it's it's a great app. They've got a 14 day free trial and it just really helps you see how you could be in the future with, you know, as a person that's promoting their business, as a person that's worthy of having 10, 20, 30,000 followers, because sometimes we don't believe that we can manage that, you know, what do yeah, I do? Or deserve it. Others? Yeah, or deserve or, yeah. and it's breaking down those like very, very internal deep rooted beliefs that may have been pre-programmed by your peers through your critical developmental stages when you were a child. You know, yeah. you watch your mother grow up and you see how she talks to herself. So now you believe that that's how, you know, we communicate with ourselves. And then you mm. start bringing on these patterns from people and they're not even your patterns. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that why? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not mine. No. Well, um, Nicole, thank you so much for, for your time. I um, encourage people to go and get absorbed with your your content go and get absorbed in your book how how can people if they don't follow you how can people follow you how can people get hold of the book and anything else that you're doing and up to yeah thank you it's available everywhere anywhere you look it'll be available it's been sold in the us the uk it's got 14 no 16 translation rights already so german spanish you know korea and loads of loads of different languages so uh you can Search for it, rewire Nicole Vignola, and it will come up. The, the closest kind of store will, will pop up on Google, on the World Wide Web, as we were yep. <laughs> discussing previously. <laughs> Amazing. And Instagram is Nicole, uh, Nicole. Neuroscience. Yeah. 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 We'll put the links in the show notes um, to those so people can head over and follow. Yeah. And Reverie's got that 14 day free trial. If you want anyone wants to give it a go, you just go on either my Instagram or their Instagram and um they've, they've got the trial yeah so what's uh just spell it out for me i'm dyslexic R -E -R -E -R oh my god me too r-e-v-e-r-i reverie -R -E -R -I. Yeah. great yeah uh, well go and check it out people and go and uh send some love uh nicole's way go and get yeah. some sex in neuroscience maybe that's gonna be the title of the <laughs> yeah, sexy science jacko thank you so much for having me it has been probably one of my favorite conversations so thank uh, you 
favorite conversation of the last hour yeah <laughs> uh, no i'm serious it was a good one i was like talking thinking wow does i'm actually blowing my own mind yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice awesome Thank well thanks so much take care thanks jacko take care Bye. Right. there we have it fantastic episode with nicole i'm buzzing i'm thinking about where am i going to put my attention and start paying more attention to where i'm putting my attention um really um yeah, enlightening and also affirming some things, but then also learning as to why certain things are are the way they are and why we experience things the, the way they are. And um, yeah, I hope you just, hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and hope that you can start to, um, yeah, utilize some of those things and I encourage you to, yeah, see what she's up to, follow what she's doing uh, on her, on her social media and uh, as long as it's not distracting your attention too much uh, and also get a copy of her book, Be Why. Um, yeah. And, and, I just want to, I just feel like I want to thank you for listening. Well, thank you for you placing some of your attention on the, the work that I'm trying to do. And I massively appreciate that. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. I appreciate you subscribing, subscribe. If you haven't, I appreciate you sharing this to someone else. If you think it's an episode that's worth sharing, that that person would benefit from it. I'd love you to do that. And uh, yeah, thank you for all of your support as ever. And I look forward to seeing you at either a certification or an event or a training or a workshop um, in 2024 with me. So uh, thank you. And I look forward to that. You've been breathing. I've been Jacko. Till next time. Keep it nasal.